Alright, so we're back here in After Effects. We're going to import that .ma file. It takes a while to import because there's so many nulls. You might want to consider uh, flagging just the tracks you need for export. Uh, I forgot to cover that, but you might want to do that. Now uh, I'm just going to reduce the resolution and kind of scrub through here. You can see the uh, track points are all pretty much staying in the same place. Kind of looks like a box, which is good. You're going to now drag that uh, TIFF sequence that we exported from After Effects back into it. Make sure that the uh, it's being interpreted as 24 frames per second. Check the whole uh, composition settings and make sure it's 24 frames per second also so nothing's out of sync all right everything's sticking to where it needs to be it's all looking good so what you need to do now is you need to go ahead and uh, at this point I would lock the footage layer so you aren't making any unnecessary movements to the footage go ahead and press command T and enter in a little text that you'd like to have tracked onto your footage here type in base E uh, but you can type whatever you want to go ahead and uh, make it a 3d layer the text a 3d layer and go ahead and hide the text and lock it and then select the null object where you want the text to appear at and hit P once you select your null go down and copy the position go up paste that position back on your text it's gonna look huge so scale it down I scale it down to like 12 or 10 or whatever and you uh, just look at the lines there on the left side of the case uh, it's uh, you know if you watch that in relation to the text you can see that it's not moving at all which is great uh, you know it means that you did a good job if you see that Alright, so after you have your text layer created, you're going to want to create a shadow for it. We'll go over two methods of creating shadows. Uh, we'll go over the best one first, uh, for, at least for this footage. Go ahead and duplicate your text and rename it text shadow or whatever you want. And um, go ahead and uh, yeah just re uh, name all your assets or name all your layers something you know representative so you're not getting confused that's just good practice but at this point you're going to want to get that text shadow on the box so you're going to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis to get it on the floor and then you're going to add a fill effect and change it to black so it's looking like a shadow and you're gonna mess with the opacity take it down to like I don't know like 30 40 something like that and now you're going to want to add a bit of fall off so get out the mask tool press G for the um, pen and just go like halfway through that text change the mask there to subtract so it's the thing being closer to the uh, text that's you know that's still visible then feather it out like 50 pixels so you can kinda you know it's not all just stopping you know boom at one point just to kinda mimic some artificial fall off there you can also, you know, use an alpha ramp or, you know, whatever. There are other ways you can go about that. Uh, go ahead and add a blur to this, like Gaussian blur. Just not a whole lot, but, uh, you know, it'll add some realism. Of course, you can, uh, you know, also add, like, grain to it, but... Let's just see how this plays out. 
and it's looking really good yep now there's also another method you can use that doesn't work for this footage as well as this one but you might try it out or you might find out where I'm messing up with it but it basically uh, there's a uh, plugin you can use from Video Copilot called VC Reflect and it's what's nice about it is that you can apply it to a text object and it automatically you know does that whole thing of creating the shadow and it has neat features like um, you can skew it uh, just like the fall off amount it has you know the opacity built in to the effect just a whole lot of things you really can't do with um, well that you can't easily do by just you know creating the duplicate layer but you know you add in your floor position and then you tint it black here uh, you, you know you you, you can get this from uh, Andrew Kramer's website, videocopilot.net, free to download. I, it's really nice for, like, motion graphics work, but um, as you'll see, it doesn't work quite well for this. Uh, you know, you can, they've got a blur setting you can add, just all sorts of stuff. But, as you'll see here in a second... It really doesn't work because yeah, I'm just kind of showing you what what's going on here. Yeah, you can adjust the floor position to kind of get the shadow in a little more. Yeah, tilt it, skew it, whatever. Match your lighting. But as you can see here, if you click through the timeline, that just yeah, that's just a mess. It's the floor position's not shifting and it's cutting into the text. That's just a train wreck right there. But uh, there is kind of a way you can get around this. You'd have to uh, pre-compose the text first. You'd uh, actually just create a new composition uh, I've already created one. Uh, looks like it's not showing up. I must have deleted it. Oh, here it is. Um, yeah, I just created a composition that has the text in it. And I insert it into the uh, main composition here. And... Uh, should have nope I don't have the VC reflect applied to it but I just add the VC reflect uh, change the parameters and whatnot Should I have this ready? But basically what, what you're doing is you're pre-composing the text and then taking that pre-comp and then adding it to the main comp and then you're going to make that pre-comp a 3D layer and then paste in the 3D data like you, you, know, you would with the uh, normal things. Just copy in the position, you know, making it a 3D layer right there pacing it and you're going to have to scale it down of course and as you can see there you know you've got the shadow and with all the controls that you, you know with the VC reflect thing but you know notice that line right there where we had the it keeps you know the B keeps shifting over that line so it's a very sucky track it probably has something to do with the position settings in the main comp. I'm not the main comp, but the pre-comp. I'm guessing, or 
I don't know, just something's not right with that. So it it's just better to use the first way I showed you of just uh, making the text and then duplicating the text uh, and creating the shadow like that. So we'll get that other text back. Oh, one thing that I was going to show you was that if uh, you want to make the scene go faster, you can highlight all the nulls, uh, then hide them, and then use the shy button there um, and just, you know, hide them so they're all out of the way. So you have a nice, clean working environment and it goes faster. Then, of course, you can always unshy them and then, you know, uh, turn their visibility back on if you want to add more objects in and you need to see the points of reference in. You can also, you know, use the uh, flag track for export so you don't have so many in here uh, you know back in Buju you can flag the tracks for export but anyways as you can see here this is looking pretty good and yeah that's basically how you get text to track using Buju tracking data so what we'll do here next is we'll uh, add a, uh, like a graphic here on the box. So turn back on your nulls and select an area where you want to place a graphic. We're going to include a Jolly Roger uh, graphic to put on here. So you select your null as normal. Uh, you can copy the position there. You can go ahead and drag in your uh, Jolly Roger asset if you haven't already. Go ahead and drag it onto the stage there or into the timeline. Then make it a 3D layer and paste that 3D position from your null and you can scale it down then uh, you're going to want to rotate it on the x-axis to where it's on the floor of the uh, or the you know the plane of the case there that's negative 90 degrees and scale it back up so it looks bigger and yeah that's looking good now what you can also do to make this look more real, I'm just hiding everything again so it speeds it up. What you can do to make this look really, uh, well, just add more real realism to it, uh, to the uh, graphic there is. You can add a texture so it looks kind of distressed and uh, video copilot uh, I know that Andrew Kramer gives out some free textures sometimes, but if you download the Riot Gear, um, the Riot Gear, I guess, is just what it's called. They have, like, textures in there that you can use. Um, a grayscale texture is what I'll be using here. You just drag that on there and you basically make it flat to the box like you did the skull there. You know, you paste, you make it a 3D object, paste in the position data, rotate it down, scale it. Then you change the track mat, the track mat setting. Uh, I forgot to mention that you want to put the texture under the graphic and then change its track mat setting to alpha mat. So it's just the, uh, you know, it's the white part that's only coming through. Then you can, you know, scale the thing if you like, if you want more resolution in the texture and you can uh, opacity fade it so it, you know, it's not as, uh, bright or whatever and then you can adjust the curve so you can sort of highlight the cracks and the texture 
add a little tent, uh, change the blacks to where they're a little lighter so the whole thing's just a little lighter. Yeah. It's looking pretty good. And uh, just mess with the settings here a little to get it looking good. So yeah, there you have your skull and your text. Both looking really nice, but there's a couple more things you can do to make this look just a little better. Go ahead and save it. Uh, here's what it's looking like right now. Not bad, but you can see that there's no motion blur on this. So we'll be adding in motion blur here in a sec. So, you know, when things move, they create motion blur. Yeah. But motion blur is the last thing that you usually uh, that you want to add because it slows down the whole composition if you don't know that already. So you check all the motion blur boxes and then check the blur, blur box for the main comp. And then you want to add in just some general blur for the t main text. Go and copy that from the shadow and just paste it to the main text and to the Jolly Roger as well. And yeah, that's looking good. Go ahead and render it out and you're done. My name's Caleb Basie and if you like this tutorial, subscribe or like it. And uh, check out my website and some of the other stuff I've done. And uh, I'll see you guys later.